that was something that I was curious about in terms of Eras, because I was talking to our MFMs here a uh, couple, this was now maybe two years ago, but they did not use Eras on the labor suite. But it seems to make sense that there would be a role for, you know, these for like blocks. C-sections or yeah, yeah, at C-sections at the time yeah. of C-sections. Are you guys using ERAS for C-sections? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. ACOC put out a huge statement on that. Redu- you know, opioid exposure to the post-obstetrical patient. It really recommended non-opioid intraoperative use and post-operative use. Of, but they actually called out, I think, Expril for a tap blocker soft tissue infiltration. That's probably been three years ago. So ACOG really looked at trying to reduce. I mean, you know, we all the opioid exposure in this country that we've heard about for the past what six years now. Uh, ACOG did put out a position statement on it. It really recommended it. Yeah, I, I don't know since I'm not really you know really <laughs> dialed into the labor suite at this point. So they might have they might have it or might not. But um, but uh, I just think that it's such an opportunity. It's a big incision, and there's a lot of manipulation going on there. And it sounds like you guys are believers. I mean, I think for the that's a, that is a challenge for women's health, though, because you're right. Colorectal and gynonc, these big incisions, but benign OBGYN surgery has the uptake and the attention to this issue has been for sure decreased compared to and less attention compared to other fields. So this is where we learn from our colleagues and the interdisciplinary and multidisciplinary knowledge that gets shared. I mean, you know, a woman ha- has a colectomy or something else, hemorrhoidectomy, they get expiral and then women's health, we can't offer it. That's not right. Right. I mean, you know, C-section is a major surgery, even though you're awake and you're, you know, hap- it's a happy occasion and everything, you know, it is still abdominal surgery. And so I think that's kind of why it was overlooked. Maybe women, you know, it's, it, they think, oh, she's having a baby. It's, I don't know. You know, a lot of people don't think of it as major surgery. And it is. And I tell my patients, you're having major surgery. This is a, this is a big surgery. You're having an abdominal incision. We have to go through all the layers just like we go through, you know, do any of our surgeries. And so they have pain just like anybody else, you know, if if not more. I mean, C-sections are not a, a gentle surgery, you know, uh, and I and I tell my patients that, you know, so I think even more so for them, it's important uh, to have this pain relief. And, you know, one thing that comes to mind just because we're talking about this, Expro is contraindicated for a paracervical block. I don't think anybody would ever use it for that. But, you know, you might say, well, why don't I, you know, why don't I knock out some of these labor pains or whatever? But it is contraindicated. It, it can only be used in obstetrics once, you know, the baby's delivered. Right. Yeah, they'll do the tab block after we deliver the baby. After we're after we're done, then they'll they'll come in. You know, the anesthesiologist will come in and do the tab block. And most of my anesthesiologists at our hospital are very receptive to it. Um, we've had a few that we had to kind of get on board, but once they we tell them the outcomes of the patient, because a lot of times the anesthesiologists don't see the outcomes. You know, they just do the out tab block and then they don't ever hear anything again. So when they heard what the outcomes were and how well these patients did, they were like, okay, yeah, we got it. You know. That's awesome. Well, uh, I have learned so much from all your tips and tricks. And this is really the way to learn is from the experts and also just not just the data, but hearing your anecdotal experience is always compelling, you know. So I really thank you guys for coming on on the show and and sharing your tips and tricks and also just how to get it on board, because a lot of people don't know how to get it. So getting a champion getting your colleagues who can attest to its efficacy, talking to the uh, pharmacy committee about it. Typically at hospitals, if you want to liaison with the the pharmacy committee, what is the best method? Is going through your chair or your practice director? Or how did you guys know who to contact? Mine was a little different because I was in the operating room and I wanted to use Expril on a total abdominal hysterectomy patient. And my GWAN coordinator, circulator, said, the pharmacy said you can't use it. Which really kind of ticked me off because I'm like, hey, who's he to say I can't use this medication? And then I then picked up the phone after the case and actually called him and 
asked for a meeting with him uh, and went and talked to him. And it was all about his budget. So I just went right to pharmacy. But I think that was a little bold and maybe it doesn't need to be the way to do it. But I think what you can do at your OBGYN departmental meeting, I think a couple of things. It's, what I'm planning to do at our next OBGYN departmental meeting is bring up the topic of the No Pain Act so people just know about that because it's right around the corner where that will be applicable for our patients. But I would go to that OBGYN departmental meeting and say, hey, we need to talk about Expiril. There's good data on that now and do it that way. And then the OBGYN department chair would then be able to talk to the pharmacy and the leadership team to get something together. Maybe bring the pharmacy director to your next OBGYN departmental meeting and have a discussion around Expiril. That's probably the way to do it. 